So I'm going to talk about uh, how you can add uh, a search engine on top of your legacy application. I have seen that has been a trending topic today, legacy things, so that's cool. Uh, by the way, who is speaking French here? Some people are speaking French? Okay, some of you. So I'm from France, but this talk is in English, but in French English, okay? I hope that you will be able to understand that. So this talk is based on my own experience when I was uh, working at the French Customs and I had exactly the, the same um, use case. I had an application running with a, a Postgres database and I wanted to add a search engine on, on top of that. And uh, so this is basically my, my story. At the end of the talk, I would really like if you can go to, the, to this uh, page and here enter your feedback here. Positive, please. No, if it's... If you don't like the talk, please tell me what you don't like. It's super important for me to improve all the time. So thank you for doing that. If you have questions during the talk, uh, please go to slido.com. There is a channel, Elastic. You can ask for any question. You can vote for the question from the overalls. I also post here my, um, the, the, the repository that I'm going to use today. Uh, and if I have time, at the end, I will answer your questions. If I don't have time, I will answer on Twitter. Okay? So, slido.com or slido.do, if you wish. So, at Elastic, uh, we are providing different kind of um, product. Uh, the, the name, uh, so, basically, we are providing an open source stack name uh, based, sorry, on Elasticsearch. So, Elasticsearch is a search engine where you can, you, you can send uh, JSON documents. Everything is indexed inside Elasticsearch. It can scale horizontally. It can deal with uh, petabytes of data, what have you. So, really uh, uh, easy to use. You will see that in a second, I think. Uh, <laughs> then you have Kibana that you can put on top of Elasticsearch. So, it's a UI. We, we, we are going to see that also here. And there is an ingest layer named Bits and Logstash. Bits are agents that you put on your edge machine. The, those are collecting data, like uh, logs, uh, um, metrics, uh, network activity, what have you. And everything is sent to Elasticsearch, and then you can visualize all that in, in, uh, in Kibana. Logstash is an ETL tool. And uh, all this stack is open source, right? You can use that for free if you want in your business, what, what you want. Uh, as a company, we are providing uh, what we call XPack. XPack is a set of um, plugins. So there is a free version of it, and then there are, there are, there are also um, commercial offers. Uh, and it brings you some new features like security, alerting, monitoring, reporting, graph exploration, and machine learning. I don't want to enter much into details, but everything is available also on the cloud. So you go to cloud.elastic.co and you have all that um, set for you and ready to go. <coughs> That's all for the marketing part. Right. Um, so I'm David Pilato. I'm Dadoune on Twitter if you want to follow me. And I will uh, share uh, also the, the link to the repository that I'm going to use to today. So here, Dadoune, my name. Um, I have been working on Elasticsearch for more than five years now. So you can see me, my activity here. Uh, since uh, 2017, I starting to become more an evangelist. So you can see less code now. I'm speaking more, I'm coding less. Uh, only the summer, during the summer, I have some time to code and contribute still on the, on the project. Okay. Um, so the repository I'm going to start from is this one. So it's on GitHub, dadune slash legacy dash search. And uh, you will see some instruction in the readme. And with those instructions, you will be able to replay everything that I'm going to show you today, if you want to do that again later. And you have different branches. Those are the major steps that I'm going to follow. And if you want to compare what is happening in one branch to another, then you will have basically what I'm going to to explain today, okay? So this is the repository you need to use. <coughs> what do we have? So we are starting from uh, an application. The application uh, is a Java application. I hope that you are all familiar with Java here. Yeah? I hope so. <laughs> um, this application, yeah, I'm sorry, for saw the picture. Um, this application is uh, managing uh, persons. So 
those persons have a field like a name, a date of birth, a gender, a number of children, some marketing data, those are counters here, I'm not going to use that today, and also an address which is uh, containing a country, a city, a country code, and a geolocation point with a latitude and longitude. So this is the, the, the bins that I have for now, this is my model. And I'm using a Postgres database, I'm using Hibernate behind the scene, and Hibernate generated the, this uh, SQL schema here, where I have a table for person, a table for marketing, and a table for address, where I have the latitude and longitude uh, inside. Okay? So this is what I have. With my application, I'm also providing a front end, so if we look at the front end now, so this is looking like this. What I want to do, I want to be able to search for people, right? I'm going to inject people in my database and I want to be able to search for them. For now, I don't have any uh, person, so I'm going to use an injector uh, that I built, so it's going to generate randomly, let's say, uh, 10,000 person in the database, so random data that I'm going to search for uh, just after. So this is happening here. We are in sending data to the Postgres database. And if I'm searching again, so we can see that we have some data coming, right? And while those data is coming, I can start for search for something. Like, okay, I want to search for Joe, for example. This is the list of the Joe that I have. So I have a Google-like search here feature, and I also have an advanced search feature, which specifically I want to search in the name field, in the country field, and in the city field. Okay? So those are the two kind of uh, search that I have. Okay, so what's wrong? Everything is working, right? So why I'm here? So I can search in different uh, fields. Let's say if I can search in the gender. No, I can't. Okay, we'll see that later. So I can search for Joe Smith. Okay, it works very well. I can search for Smith, obviously. Ah, Smith Joe. I can't search for Smith Joe, right? I have an implementation issue here. I, we are going to see what is happening behind the scene, but you will understand what is happening. Okay, can I search with G, oh, I did a typo. Okay, I can't search with typos uh, either. Okay, that's another issue I have. I can search for city probably, yes, that's okay. I can search for country. Hmm. Sorry? Ah, that's interesting what you are saying here. Exactly, that's the point actually. I'm super surprised by the, by the result. By the way, do you know who is France Gall? Yeah, she was a singer, famous singer, my favorite one, but okay, she died recently. Um, whatever. So what is interesting here is that on the results that I have, I have this France Gall, but France Gall is coming in the second place, second position. I'm not expecting that, actually, because France Gall is a, like a unique term in the name field. I would expect it to be on the top of the list. This is more important for my use case if I'm searching for France to find someone which, which name is France, actually. So that's strange that I have these results uh, in, in that order. And actually, we can explain that because uh, I have injected probably in my database France Gall in the second position after Joe Smith. So th that's the reason it's uh, coming uh, in the second position instead of the top of the list. So this is not an issue because I have only a few number of data, so I can go through all the pages to find my France Gall. But I'm not expecting that. When I'm using a search engine, like if I'm using Google or Quant, for example, um, I'm expecting that on the top of the first page, I'm finding the, 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 the data that I need to, that I was looking for, actually. So this is a question of relevancy, right? You want to provide a search engine which is uh, relevant to your user. And how you can fix that? Use a search engine. A search engine is built for that, right? So I'm going to use a search engine here. Elasticsearch is the best choice ever, but I'm biased. I'm working at Elastic. Um, the question is now how you can send the data that you have in the database to Elasticsearch. You need to synchronize all those information. So what you can do? You can use an ETL, Talend, for example, or Mule ESB. Those are 
very good tools, or Logstash, I mentioned Logstash early. So you can do that. And now you can run a batch every five minutes with going to run a SQL query on your database, transform that to JSON, send that to Elasticsearch. But what is the problem? Let's say that my user click on the save button in, in the application here. He will have to wait for five minutes to see the record appearing in the, in the result set, right? So it's not real time. And how can I deal with updates or deletes? If I'm updating a document, what should I do the next time I'm running the, the batch? Should I consume again the whole database, re-index everything, or just use maybe, I can add a technical field in my database, which is the last date I updated something and then compare my date. And delete is even worse, because you need to remove something which is not coming back. If you remove something in the database, you need to be aware that something which is not coming back has to be removed in Elasticsearch. So it's super hard. And to me, this is not my favorite way for doing that. What I prefer to do, if possible, and this is what I'm going to show you today, I prefer to hack the application, if possible. And in the same transaction, where I'm sending the data to uh, the database, uh, in the same transaction, I, I want to send that uh, to Elasticsearch as well. That makes me think that I forgot to show you the actual code running now. So the SQL code that we have. So first of all, I'm going to show you this method. So I have a service layer, and in the service layer, I'm using the save, um, I, sorry, I wrote this save method, where I'm getting a person, and I'm starting a, tra a Hibernate transaction, and I'm using transaction, uh, sorry, Hibernate behind the scene, to save this uh, entity in the database, right? And when I'm committing the transaction. When it comes to searching, if I look at the search method that I have, so this is the search like Google method. I'm uh, getting from the interface uh, queries what the user has entered. And what I'm doing here, I'm doing a find like Google, and the implementation is here. So I'm using, I'm generating a query, and what I'm doing here, with what the user has entered, I'm writing a percent query percent strategy. So I'm going to run a like percent strategy because I'm searching in the person table and the, in the address table, I have to do a join here, so I'm doing a join. And whatever the user has entered, I'm searching for that in the name field, address.country and address.city. That's the reason why gender was not working previously. That's also the reason why when I have been searching for Smith Joe, it was not working because in the name field, I had Joe Smith, right? So I can split maybe the term that the user is searching for and try to find different combination, but yeah, it's not super nice. The advanced search is super similar. So I'm getting from the interface a name field, uh, sorry, a name value, a country value, or a city value. And if the user has entered anything in the name uh, field, then I'm searching with the like uh, person strategy in the database within the name field. Same for country, I'm searching in country, and same for city. Right? So this is how everything is working now. So let's add now Elasticsearch. First thing to do, is to add uh, a dependency to the Elasticsearch uh, client here. So I'm going to use <coughs> here the latest version that we have been released uh, recently, last week, I think, um, of Elasticsearch, which is this version 6.2.3. So I'm getting here uh, high-level REST client. This is how we call it. And what I told you is that in the service layer, anytime I'm saving a document an entity in my database, I want also to save it in Elasticsearch. I'm going to build the Elasticsearch DAO class. And I want to save it in Elasticsearch. So let's create this. So that will be an Elasticsearch DAO class. Let's make that uh, final. We need to create that class in the DAO package. So I'm using here a Restix, it's like a Spring Boot thing, but uh, it's not. 
So I can annotate also the, 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 this class as a component, so I can then inject it automatically in my constructor here. Okay. So there we go. It's here. Um, okay, so I have my Elasticsearch GEO. I need to implement the save method. Let's do that. So I want to create this save method. Oh, void is okay. Um, what do I need to have to communicate with Elasticsearch? First thing, I need to have a high level, the REST high level client that I mentioned before. So everything is REST in Elasticsearch. So I'm going to use this one. So this is the REST, oh, I'm sorry. REST high level client. Let's call it client. And I'm going to initialize it in the constructor. Okay. So I need to build here um, a client. <coughs> so I think I have that. So, yes. So what, it, what this is doing, it's building a REST high level client, which is going to connect on the default Elasticsearch port. So Elasticsearch will be ro running locally on 9200 port by default. So I have my client, good. I need something else. I mentioned that Elasticsearch speaks JSON. So you need to send JSON document to Elasticsearch, not bins, but JSON documents. So to do that, I'm going to use the uh, Jackson library. Jackson is a super popular library. And Jackson is providing this object ma mapper class uh, that I can add in the constructor that I can inject here. Okay, so with this library, I can serialize my uh, entity as a, a string or as a byte array, as I wish. I'm going to use byte array. Okay, let's do that. So here, in the bytes, I have a JSON representation of my entity, okay, my person object, with all the elements that I need. Second step, I need to call Elasticsearch, so I have the client. I want to index something. I want to create a new index request then. So what I need to tell Elasticsearch, I need to tell what is the index name that I want to use. I'm going to store my documents inside the index name person. So Elasticsearch is multi-tenant, which means that you can send in multiple indices within the same cluster, different kind of documents. Here, I'm going to uh, add the, the type. The type is a deprecated uh, thing, so by default, I'm going to use a doc as the type name. Um, what is the ID of the document? So this ID has been generated by Hibernate when I stored the document, and then I'm just transforming it as, as a JSON document. So. I'm missing something here. I need to set the document itself, so I need to provide a JSON, so bytes, and I need to tell Elasticsearch that this is actually a JSON document, JSON content. So basically, with those two lines of code, I'm able to create a JSON document and send it to Elasticsearch, and Elasticsearch will index it uh, automatically. Let's compile that. <coughs> I'm expecting a problem. Okay. So I can have an exception here. While I'm communicating with Elasticsearch, maybe something can go wrong. Right? Maybe Elasticsearch is not available, or whatever. So let's write some code. I'm going to write some pseudo code just to uh, make you understand what you can do. So for example, here, I can say, if anything goes wrong with Elasticsearch, maybe I can do something like roll back the current transaction, right? I don't want to save my data in the database. Actually, when I was working for the French Customs, uh, it was super, super important for uh, the use case that whatever is happening with the search engine, we are always, always able to save the data in the database. 
storing the data in the data store is more important than having the search engine uh, working, right? So what we did is something like this. Actually, we did not do that, but we said, okay, Houston, we have a problem. No, we, we didn't do that. Uh, we, what we did, we sent that uh, uh, object to a message queue system, and then we were able to replay whatever has been accu accumulated in the message queue system. But, okay, here yeah, it's kind of pseudo code here. Okay, let me show you how you can deal with delete now. I mentioned that it can be hard to synchronize both systems. So, when you delete an entity in the database within the same transaction, you can also call Elasticsearch, add a delete method, and say, I want to remove a document by its ID. Let's create that. That will be the ID. What you have to do, call the client, call the delete method, add a delete request. What is the index name? So this is the index name. Person, what is the type? Doc, what is the ID? ID. Okay, and I can have exception, and that's okay. Okay, so it's super easy, right, to add documents, to update document. Anytime you update a document, you are going to call the exact same uh, thing and to remove document as well. So, we are almost uh, ready, so I can restart the application, but I'm missing an uh, important piece, which is Elasticsearch itself. So, here I have a Docker Compose uh, file. So I'm going to use Docker Compose for simplicity, but you can do, use uh, whatever you want. So I'm just going to run Docker Compose up. So it's going to start Elasticsearch, and it's also going to start Kibana, that I'm going to use uh, later. Okay, Elasticsearch is starting. We should see at some point the HTTP message, the HTTP, sorry, uh, uh, layer on port 9200. Okay, it's mixed in the logs from Kibana as well. Uh, sorry, I'm going here. I'm just going to open Kibana, if it's ready. Okay, Kibana is coming. So Kibana is a front-end, as you can see. I'm not going to uh, explain the front-end for now. I'm just going to go to the, uh, the dev tool. The dev tool is super uh, handy because instead of uh, passing curl request to Elasticsearch, and you can just pass simple requests like this one, get slash. You, what you can do is to do a copy as curl here and execute the same thing in the shell, if you wish. Oops. Of course, it's not working because I'm in a Docker Composer. What have you? So this is the, the, the request that you can have. Um, so if I look at what I have for now, I don't have any index name person. I, I have nothing. So I can restart my application. Let's restart. And hopefully this is going to work. Okay. So first thing first, I need to uh, insert again new documents in the database and in Elasticsearch. So I'm going to send 1,000 documents here for now. Let's be super conservative. Okay. So the rate is lower than what we have seen before but we are going to see if we can fix that. If we go back to the console and look at what we have, we can see the number of documents increasing. Okay, so documents are coming to Elasticsearch. And if I run a simple search, like search for everything, which, which is what we call a match all, you can see back a JSON document. A JSON document is giving the total number of documents, which is always increasing. And you can see the first 10 documents and uh, in those 10 documents, you can see a field name source, which contain basically the JSON representation of the bins that we have seen before. Okay. So everything is here. Um, but still, when I'm searching here, I'm still searching in the database. I did not change that yet. So let's move 
to that part. Let's change the way uh, Elasticsearch is actually searching. So to do that, we are going to change uh, the search method that we have here. So instead of calling the database, we are going to remove all that. And what we want to do, we want to build a query in Elasticsearch. So for that, we have query builders. So I'm going to use, which one is it? It's this one. The query. And what I'm going to to, to tell uh, here is that if I have nothing uh, entered by the user, I want to build a specific query, and this query is builders is what we call the match all query, which means give me everything that you have. I don't have any criteria, so give me everything. Otherwise. If the user has entered anything, I want to build another kind of query. Query? It's hard to say that one. Uh, I'm going to use here what we call the multi-match query. So what the user uh, gave us is Q. And now, in which field do, do we want to search for that value? We said that we want to search in name field. We want to search in address dot country, we want to search in address.city as well. And because uh, everything is indexed by Elasticsearch by default, we can search in whatever you want, gender for example. So we have the query. Let's use the DO again. Let's create a method search with the query parameter. I'm just going to show you how you can implement pagination, kind of, you know. So let's implement this method. Okay. First thing, going to call the client, going to call the search method, and I need to create a search request. I can pass some parameters here. By default, Elasticsearch, uh, sorry, this client is going to search in all the indices because I don't pass any uh, uh, specific index. Here, I just want to search within the person index. Okay. Um, let's remove that. And then I can provide a source. So this is a bit verbose, but okay. I need to live with that. So with the source source builder, I can pass now what is the query. This is what we have seen. And just to show you how you deal with pagination just pass the from and size parameter. So size is the size of the page, and from is the first record or whatever you, uh, what is that size that you want to, to, to get back. So this is providing a response, and I'm going to return that response. OK. So here, <coughs> I'm getting back a response, and my application is not that legacy. Uh, I'm not using uh, struts or what have you over all the things. I'm using an Angular JS application which can speak JSON, so I'm cheating just a bit. But the, the purpose of the talk is about the back end, the front end. So I'm just going to send back the JSON, and everything everything is already ready uh, on the front end part. Okay. So I have implemented the simple search thing. I'm going to do the same thing for the advanced search. Let's remove all that code. I'm going to type faster, like this. So what I'm saying here, I'm saying that if the user did not enter anything in name field, in country field, and in city field, then again, run a match all query. Otherwise, create what we call a Boolean query. And if the user has entered anything in the name box, then it must match on the name field. If the user has entered anything on the country field, it must match on the address that country. OK? Same for city. So I think this is it for now. Yeah. So I'm going to restart. 
Yeah, I should use uh, Jirabel, probably. Mm -hmm. well, hopefully, it's going to work. Okay. So now, here, I'm using the Elasticsearch to search for data. Right? So I have a match here, just some random data. If I'm searching for Joe, hmm, it does not work at, as it was working before. Oh, but Joe, the full term is working. Okay. Joe Smith. Okay. So we have Joe, we have Joe Smith, but Joe Smith is on the top of the list, which is cool. Smith, Joe. Okay. So it's better, not always better, but it's better. We can search for gender. Male. Okay. okay. Let's search for the country, France. Wow, France Gall is on the top of the list. This is what I'm expecting, right? It's much more relevant for me because France Gall is super uh, unique in the name field, so it's super relevant for my use case. Yeah. Okay, the advanced search. So we have the same problem. If we don't have the full term, it does not work. But if we have the full term, then it's working very well, okay? So we have to fix some few things, but before uh, covering why it's not working uh, as, as we would expect, I just want to uh, see if we can improve that number. Uh, we are able to inject only 23 documents per second, which is low. Um, and why is that? It's just because the way we are uh, calling Elasticsearch here, for every single document, we are uh, sending a REST call to Elasticsearch, we are providing the document, and we are getting the response back. And we are sending a document, getting the response back, which is not efficient. In Elasticsearch, we have um, an API named the bulk API, and the bulk API helps you to uh, send a batch of operation to do, so within one single HTTP request, which is much, much, much faster. And for that, we have in Java, we are lucky, we have this nice bulk processor class. I'm going to explain what it is. Just going to comment that. So I'm building here this bulk processor instance. And what I'm saying, I'm going to send requests to the bulk processor. So uh, add request, a delete request, what have you. And what I'm saying, I'm saying that every 10,000 actions that are in the bulk, then flush the bulk to Elasticsearch with one request. If you don't have 10,000 actions, then every five seconds, fa flush the bulk to Elasticsearch. Okay, this is what I'm doing. So I need to change a bit my code here. Yeah? Instead of calling index, I'm going to call the bulk processor, and I'm going to add this request. And same for delete. I can do the exact same thing here. like it's compiling, yeah. I'm not going to uh, restart now. I just want to fix the other problem that we have. We will see the effect of that uh, just after. So, why it was not matching when I was searching for Joe? We are going to Kibana again. Uh, you need to understand something. Uh, Sometimes people are uh, speaking about Elasticsearch as a schemaless or no schema, etc. But there is a schema in Elasticsearch actually. But the schema is automatically generated for you if you don't tell Elasticsearch what to do. This is what we call the mapping. And we, if we look at what the mapping is here, you can see that Elasticsearch automatically guesses that you had provided an address.city field and by default, Elasticsearch will consider that you want to run full text search on it. And to run full text search on it, Elasticsearch has to build an index, an inverted index. And to build this index, Elasticsearch has to do some transformation of your text. What, what is the, the kind of transformation which is happening? This is what you can see when you use the Analyze API that we have. You will understand what is happening behind the scene when you index uh, a text like Joe Smith using the default analyzer that we have, the name is the standard analyzer. So if I'm, execute, if I'm executing this method, you can see that the output of this analyze uh, operation is two terms, Joe 
and Smith. Okay. So this is what is going to be indexed in the inverted index. We are using Lucene behind the scene, right? So this is what is going to happen in Lucene. What happened at search time? When the user enters Joe, for example, and we use the same analyzer, then the token which is produced at search time is GO. But GO is not equal to GOE. That's the reason it does not match. If you are searching for GOE, then it produces GOB, lowercase, you can see that. And GOE is exactly what we have here. So it matches. So that's the reason it was not matching, because at search time, when we, we use the same analyzer, we, we don't find the token in the inverted index. How we can uh, deal with that? There are many options for that, but one of those options is to create our own analyzer. So this is what I'm going to show you here. I'm going to create a test index, and I'm going to provide some um, settings inside this index. One of the settings is the analyzer that I want to use. I want to create an analyzer named uh, Ngram Analyzer, and it's going to use what we call a tokenizer, and th this tokenizer, I define it here, it's a, it's a edge and gram tokenizer. I'm not going to enter into uh, details, I'm just going to show you what is the effect of this, and you will understand. So if I'm using the ngram analyzer that I just uh, created on the Joe Smith text, what is going to produce? G, G O, G O E, S, S M, etc., etc. Which means that now, if I'm searching for G O, obviously G O and G O are equal, so I can find back my document. Right? So we need to uh, provide that analyzer to uh, Elasticsearch. So what I can do, I can do manually uh, that here. I can. Just say, okay, I'm going to create the index manually. But uh, I wrote uh, a library. The name is uh, for, it's for Java. It's a Beyonder. Uh, with Beyonder, I'm going to ask uh, Beyonder to do that automatically, like automatically, not really. But to simplify uh, that, and actually I want to have the, the settings and the mapping within my code, within my uh, code repository. So with Beyonder, if I have a directory in the class pass in the class pass by convention named Elasticsearch, and if I have a subdirectory in it, that will be the index name. Here, that means that I want to create an index name person. And if I have inside a file named underscore settings dot json, then this file is going to be used, I don't know why, I have al always this bug. <laughs> Do I have someone from IntelliJ here? <laughs> I don't know why. So anytime I have that, I need to do git, <coughs> compare with branch, and then I don't know why it's happening correctly. Yeah, I'm going to do that, okay. Sorry? No, no, no. No, it's a recent uh, bug that I found when I updated my IntelliJ the last time, but okay. I need to report it. Uh, anyway, so uh, I created this uh, underscore settings.json document, and I, what I'm saying here, I'm saying that I'm providing the analyzer that we have seen before, and I'm also doing something else. I'm creating a schema. Instead of letting Elasticsearch guess the schema for me, I'm going to force Elasticsearch to use the schema that I want. So for example, here I'm saying that you will see a address.city field. This will be a text field. I still want to do full text search on it using the default analyzer, but at index time, you are going to copy the content of this field inside a new field, which is generated at index time, named full text. And with full text field, I can run full text search on it, but I'm going to use the ngram strategy that I just mentioned, right? So I will be able to search for sub tokens. What I'm also saying here is that for the city field, you are also going to generate sub fields when you index it, like city.autocomplete, where I'm going to use the same ngram strategy that I mentioned. 
but also city.ags. And I'm using a different kind of type. I'm using a type of keyword, which means that with, within this field, city.type, I can run what we call aggregations. I'm going to show you that. And I can also run sorting and all that stuff on, on it. Right. So I have different use cases for the same content. So three use cases uh, in that case. So what is missing? I need to call a beyonder at some point. So here, I'm going to call beyonder start with the client, the low level one, and try catch. Okay. So I think I removed the index. No? Yeah. So I can uh, now uh, restart my application again. Hopefully, we are going to be a bit faster. Okay. Rock and roll is the message that I was waiting for. It's cool, which means everything is okay. Um, so if I look at the mapping that we have, we can see that Beyonder did his job. Okay. So I have the same kind of settings that we have seen before. So we need to index, again, documents inside Elasticsearch. So let's start with 1,000. So it's better than it was, right? We are increasing the, the performance here. Not that ideal yet, but uh, that's OK. And let's search now. For oh, it does not work. Why? Actually, I did not change the fields I'm searching in, right? I'm still searching with the old behavior. So I need to change that. So let's go here. So instead of searching in the name field, gender, address and country, address and city, what have you, I'm just going to search within the full text field that I have now. And I can do something more interesting. I can say if what the user has entered matched match on the name field, then this document will be much more relevant for me. So I want to, to boost the result, the, the score that we are computing by a factor of three, for example. Name is much more important for my use case than the other fields. Okay. So let's compile that. I mean debug one normally. normally. Okay. So if I'm searching now for Joe, oh, it's cool, working, right? France. There. And France is much more important for my use case than the other world. Okay? Uh, advanced search. So same problem. It does not match. Why? Because we are still using the, the old uh, fields. So instead of searching in the name field, we can search now in the name.autocomplete, which is using my ngram strategy that I mentioned before. And same for country, same for city. That. So, Joe, okay, France, Paris. Okay, so it's working how it was working before. Um, can we do more than that? Yes. So let's do a simple experiment here. I'm going to, in the same method, I'm just going to not call uh, Hibernate anymore. I'm just going to call Elasticsearch. Okay? But in the same method, because Hibernate is not generating an ID, I'm going to ask Elasticsearch to generate an ID for me. So if I'm, if I'm not providing an ID to Elasticsearch, then Elasticsearch will do that for me. So let's compile that again. And let's see if, it, if it's faster. 1,000. Boom. Okay. 10,000. Boom. Okay. So let's go with I don't know, one million? <coughs> this is one million, okay. So it's much, much, much faster than it was. It's not that fast here on my laptop because I'm using uh, Docker and uh, the file system layer between the Mac and the Docker is not uh, ideal. Normally, if you run uh, Elasticsearch locally with a Docker here, you should be able to run up to 12,000 documents per second or something like this. But it's fast, right? And because this is a search engine, it's fast also as, at search time, right? If I'm, you, you can see the number of documents increasing here. If I search for Joe, 
Okay, it's super fast. It does not take a long time to search for oh, not friends. Is this friends? Friends? Okay. That's fine. Can we do more? Why this is indexing? Yes. Uh, whatever the number of documents I have here, I would like to have a representation of my data set. I would like to understand what is the distribution of data broken by year, by uh, country, or what have you. So for that, we have a nice framework uh, named aggregations in Elasticsearch. Um, I'm going to create one aggregation, two aggregations here, actually. So what I'm saying, I'm saying that on the result set that you have, build what we call a terms aggregation. A terms aggregation is like a group by, on a field, count, ordered by the most important values. And do that on this field. Remember that I created this dot args field at index time. So this is the first aggregation that we have, and we want to create a new, another aggregation, which is a date histogram on the date of birth field. I want you to create a bucket per year and count the number of documents that you have per year. Basically, that's it. Okay. So let's compile that again. Where is the index version? Oh, we are done with the one million documents. Okay. So we can now search within our result set, and we can see the result here of the distribution of the data. Right? So on the front end, I have already called all that. So I have the distribution broken by, by country or broken by uh, years. So if I'm searching for Joe now in my data set, OK, I know that in 11 milliseconds, on my 1 million data set, I have 1,600 blah, blah, blah documents. And those are the distribution of the documents. I have enough time? No, I don't. Because it's told me some uh, time. <laughs> so. Um, we can do more. We can re replace this aggregation by a more advanced one. So let's do this one. So we still have the first level of aggregation, which is broken by country, so group by country. But then we are asking for a sub-aggregation. For every country, I want to have the number of documents broken by around 10 years. And for each bucket, I want to add a sub aggregation which is compute the average number of children that you have. Okay. So I need to change the interface. You will see it's not the interface talk, because I just have to uncomment that. What is the effect of that? If I restart, I have the compute button. And now you can see the distribution of my million documents broken by country, by 10 years, and for every 10 years, the average number of children that we have in each bucket. And of course, we can search for Joe here, right? So with our full data set, we have that representation and that information. And it can come live. If I'm indexing new data, this is updating automatically. I mean, I don't have to run a batch to compute that. It's happening every time you need to to uh, ask Elasticsearch, you just have to ask Elasticsearch, and that's all. Um, I still have something to deal with, the typo, right? Does not work. Can we fix that? Obviously, we can. So what can we do to fix that? You can, where is it? Here, here. You can here say, I'm allowing you to have what we call a fuzziness factor. Like, I'm allowing you to have one character missing, one character more, one flip of characters, what have you, right? So with that, with this fuzziness factor, if I'm searching for G, smooth, okay, I have my result back. And I can do the same thing here, G, does that work? But I can use the same fuzziness parameter to say here <coughs> fuzziness, fuzziness, and fuzziness. Okay. So if I'm searching for G, living in France, living in Kiris, okay, I'm getting back some result. Right. Not my Joe Smith, but okay. if I search for Joe, 
Olha a vida. Um, last thing, uh, because we are in Kibana, uh, we can use Kibana for what it has been uh, built for. We can go to the your discover panel and say I want to look at my data set from 1940 to 2010. Okay, so I have one million hits and this is the distribution of my document. So this is basically the result of the, the data program that I had uh, shown you just before. I can select some field like uh, I want to see the name, the gender, the country, the city, children, whatever you okay? I can save that, that thing, I can build some visualization, and I can build then some dashboard. I'm not going to cover that in detail, just show you the final results. So I have already built a dashboard for you. So this is basically a set of visualization which is representing my data set here. So this is my <coughs> data set, I have some representation. For example here, I know that I have 126,000 person living in this area because I have the geo points. And I can search, as I said, for geo, why not? So this is the distribution of my geo. I have some geo who are females. I'm going to click on females. Oh, this is only the geo who are females. Let's look at all the women that we have. I'm going to zoom in for uh, women uh, who were born in the 70s, living in France, okay, living in Sergi Pontoise. Sergi Pontoise is the city where I'm coming from. And if I'm zooming, you can see it's a random thing, <laughs> the square. But if I'm zooming, I can also say I'm living here, actually. So, okay, I want to see all the women living here and born in the 70s. Okay. So I built my dating system here. I have the list. And because my wife is also using the same system, I want just to negate that. I don't want to see my wife and his uh, colleagues, uh, but just the other one, right? <laughs> so whatever data you have with Elasticsearch, you can just index that and then use that powerful engine to make whatever you want with that, a search engine, a BI tool, uh, whatever. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I'm done. So, I just want to show you again the repository that I use. I'm going to tweet about it. Yeah, if you want to take picture, that's the moment. Picture of it, right? Uh, and do I have questions here? That's okay. Do I have questions? No? You were too focused on the presentation, maybe? Yeah, a question. Okay. So thank you very much. Oh, there is a question there. Uh, do I have time? Yeah, so we are going to take on the cafe. Pause, break. Uh, you are going to, to ask the question after the, uh, during the coffee break, right? Okay, I have stickers here. If you want to take some stickers, please come. And uh, thank you very much for, for your attention.